According to Oak Island historian Charles Barkhouse, the British military items found on Oak Island suggest evidence of a British encampment on the island, possibly following the 1762 British siege of Havana, Cuba, then an important Spanish naval base. During the siege, the British looted millions in gold from the Spanish. As the theory goes, the cargo was transported north to Halifax, when rogue British naval officers ordered the ship to Oak Island, where they had the treasure hidden. The late Fred Nolan also believed Oak Island's treasure to be spoils from the Battle of Havana, seized by members of the British Royal Navy and buried in the swamp. Nolan discovered an old carved stone surveyor's monument in the Oak Island woods sometime in early 1977. The stone had chisel scars and scorch marks and had a shape vaguely suggestive of a Spanish treasure galleon. This discovery was purely accidental, Nolan said. We were following a survey line from one of our other reference points which led us right through the woods. I was crawling along on my hands and knees and came across a stone sticking out of the ground directly along the survey line. We felt the monument was placed in its position for a purpose. After placing the stone marker on a survey map of the island, Nolan became convinced of two things, that whoever buried the Oak Island treasure had training as a surveyor and were almost certainly former army or navy personnel, and that the bulk of the treasure was actually buried in the swamp. Another interesting theory suggests the story of the Oak Island money pit was part of the siege of Havana. This theory states that the siege was planned by a group that included high-ranking British naval officers who were also high-level Freemasons and belonged to the Masonic Premier Grand Lodge of England. These Masons were members of the Whig party opposed to the next successor to the throne, the unstable King George III. These members were identified as Washington Shirley, 5th Earl Ferrers. Vice Admiral, Grand Master of the Masonic Lodge, Premier Grand Lodge of England. Ferrers was an astronomer and owned his own orrery. In 1761, Ferrers had been elected to the Royal Society for his work on the observations of the transit of Venus. Ferrers purchased the painting entitled, A Philosopher Giving a Lecture on the Orrery in which a lamp is put in place of the sun and is pictured on the right of the painting. George Lord Anson, Admiral of the Feet. His suggestion was for the British to attack Havana. Also a member of the Royal Society, Anson is familiar to us from his family's involvement with the Shepherds of Arcadia monument at Sherborough Hall. It is suspected that the Ansons were involved with Oak Island. George Keppel, 3rd Earl of Ambermarle, Commander-in-Chief of the Army to attack Havana with the rank of Lieutenant General. He was a protege of Prince William Augustus, Duke of Cumberland. He also fought at the Battle of Culloden during the Jacobite Rebellion with his father William, 2nd Duke of Ambermarle, and carried the dispatch of Cumberland's success to London. His father William was also associated with Madame de Pompadour, mistress of King Louis XV, who was also associated with the Anson family, Count St. Germain, and others. Augustus Keppel, 1st Viscount Keppel, Rear Admiral, brother to George Keppel. He entered the Royal Navy and was appointed to the Centurion and sent with George Anson around the world in 1740. 
He lost many of his teeth due to scurvy that was prevalent on the voyage. His health suffered from yellow fever, which affected an immense proportion of the soldiers and sailors in Cuba. He was awarded 25,000 pounds of prize money from the Spanish spoils. William Keppel, Lieutenant General, served with his brothers George and Augustus Keppel in the British expedition in Havana and directed the storming of Moro Castle. In 1763, he succeeded Embermarle as British governor of Cuba. The island was returned to Spain in July 1763. George Pocock, Admiral, commander of the fleet in the invasion of Havana. The money value of the prize money was enormous. Pocock's portion alone as naval commander-in-chief was 122,697 pounds, which was the same as Abermarl's. Pocock resigned his commission within a few years afterwards. Benjamin Franklin, first Grand Master of Pennsylvania, who met in 1760 with Washington Shirley, the Grand Master of England, to discuss the plan. We are very familiar with Franklin and his background. The theory states that the plot originated due to the concern of the imminent invasion of England during the Seven Years' War by the joint forces of France and Spain. Spain outlawed all forms of secret organizations, including Freemasonry. The plan was to direct a fortune to the New World to enable the transfer of the Masonic organization if and when the situation was necessary. Their plan entailed the capture of Havana's Moro Castle, which was the Fort Knox of New Spain, holding the South and Central America's gold supply prior to its shipment to Spain. Once acquired, a portion of the treasure could be taken and hidden somewhere. The invasion of Havana was under the command of George Keppel and his two brothers, Augustus and William Keppel, commanding the actual attack. They were successful and acquired an unprecedented amount of treasure. They also captured a portion of the Spanish fleet, which were needed to accomplish the plan. Admiral Pocock returned to England with the main fleet carrying a part of the treasure, while Augustus and William Keppel, along with their crew and Masonic engineers, all sworn to secrecy, manned the eight Spanish galleons and two British man-of-war. This treasure was diverted to a small island called Oak Island. The theory explains that the Oak Island treasure was buried based on the Masonic Royal Arch of Enoch's Temple story, consisting of nine arches going down nine levels by way of a main shaft. The money pit, which was dug down to the bedrock, from the ninth level under tunnel, was constructed which ran back up to a point above the known waterline, roughly 20 feet underground, and at this point an enormous cavern was built to hold the treasure. The treasure was carted down the main shaft and placed up into this cavern. Once the treasure was secured in the cavern and all the evidence was hidden from the island, it was documented that Keppels sailed back to England and with two ships and a small portion of the treasure, claiming that the remainder of the fleet had sunk in a hurricane en route. Other names associated with Havana are interesting in regard to Nova Scotia and Oak Island. Lieutenant Colonel Patrick McKellar was appointed chief engineer of the siege. McKellar had experience from the taking of Lewisburg. Another, Joseph Gorham, led Gorham's rangers at Lewisburg. Gorham also had been stationed at Lunenburg and owned 300 acres there. And Benoni Danks, who commanded Danks' rangers. They often operate in tandem with Gorham's Rangers and the two companies merged into a single Nova Scotia Ranging Corps. They also took part in the siege. Banks returned to Nova Scotia and in 1767 was named Collector of Duties on Alcohol, Tea, Coffee, and Playing Cards. Sympathetic to the American Revolution, Danks was captured after taking part in a rebellion, the Battle of Fort Cumberland and died at Windsor, Nova Scotia. Were these men involved with bearing treasure on Oak Island? Considering their connections and familiarity with the Oak Island story, it is a distinct possibility.
Please join Quest of Oak Island Facebook group and subscribe to Quest of Oak Island podcast on YouTube for more information.